received notice of absence from the members MP De Weaver and MP Emmanuel. Are there any notifications from the floor at this time? Chair, why are we here today? This meeting was scheduled for last week, Thursday. But Madam Chair, I would like to say and say this today on the floor of Parliament, a house divided cannot rule. And when I look in front of me, I ask myself, where are the members of the two by four government? Again, Madam Chair, it is called for the members of the opposition, the Super Seven, the outgoing government, the government that shouldn't be there by extension, to once again give quorum so that the people's business can be handled. When I look directly in front of me, Madam Chair, the famous speech, show up. We must show up. Where is the show up? Madam Chair, again, we are here in the House of Parliament and the big bad wolf, the two by four, the two by four government that was protected. They put on the two by four, they put on the blocks, they put on the canvas, but today the canvas blow off and it's gone. Why? The two by four is down to a two by three, and if I look good, a two by two and a half government. Because I see no members from the now faction on Thursday, I saw no members from this faction, half a member from that faction, but it is said that members of the opposition is playing games, and that's why we didn't have quorum. No, let the truth be told on the floor of parliament today. The reason that this meeting is postponed, adjourned, and called again today was the mere fact that on last Thursday, there was no quorum. No quorum was given by the two by four government, the eight members. Where were the eight members? The public wants to know, Madam Chair, through you, we would want to know where was the eight members to give quorum so that all of this handling of credentials and moving on with the people's business could have been completed. But no, when asked, we have a speaker's time, because I'm not finished. When asked where were the members of the two by four, if it I, all nine of us swearing in, we ain't showing up. That was a message conveyed from that camp. Then, where was the other member? I was celebrating my body in Cancun. I was celebrating a body in Cancun. Where is Miss Show Up? Oh, I got better things to do. Mr. Because Marlin, the government is you are in notifications. Madam Chair, I have more things to say. Mr. Marlin, so, you Madam are Chair. in notifications. I'm just reminding okay. you of the brevity of notifications. Thank you. Okay, Madam Chair, in closing, I would like to emphasize, show up. Show up, because I don't know if I self should show up to give quorum to allow this, con this thing to continue like that. Um, Madam Chair, I have a question particularly to you. How long? How long will you continue to attach your face to a government that seemingly be of chaos? How long will you attach your face to a coalition that obviously does not show up? You see, what happened last week, it was tried to be twist and use a political narrative that, oh, the seven opposition members did not show up to allow the young men to come in. But that is the responsibility of not only us, but the coalition to properly plan. And what I realize is that while one person may be off island, there were other members not here, not here to allow their incoming coalition members to come in. And today, again, we see some of the members not here. Regardless, if you were here before, you are not here to handle it. So again, it is dependent on us to now approve the credentials of these two young men to allow them to take part in a coalition in which we are opposition. So I said to you, Madam Chair, how long? And I said to you, incoming members of parliament, realize, realize, and maybe think if this 
it's a coalition that you want to attach yourself to. Happy to see um, that we have quorum. Um, I believe seeing that we are here and should be here as 15 members of parliament, it's not the moment or time to pay politics with this matter. We have to make sure that our parliament is at its full capacity and seeing the current change and us not being at its full capacity, we need to focus on that and make sure that the credentials are being handled and the new members of parliament can enter. So I think that should be the focus point and I would like to leave it at that. I am concerned. Um, in these notifications, I definitely do not see the need to be wasting the people's time. However, but I find it important to note that throughout our tenure as government just passed, I was asked constantly, do I have a government? Do I have support in parliament? Do I have support in parliament? And I am concerned that the situation that unfolded on Thursday, where the coalition was not able to field their aid support to show support for seeing that their resignation would go into place on Friday. I find it very unfortunate indeed that these two gentlemen sitting here today were not approved on Thursday with the support of their own parties. This comes into question on whether the particular member that mentioned that he would not be here and is still not here today to support this based on the fact that he, he didn't become a minister. I find that very unfortunate indeed, and the people of St. Martin deserve better. Chair, you only get one chance to make a first impression. And the impression of this current coalition for me, as my colleague explained, is chaos. Because when we put our people in a position where they are not sure if we're going left or we're going right, it was pushed to the limit where we almost had to serve three months because of their lack of assertiveness lack of transparency with this entire process. Madam Chair, I saw a letter, two letters actually, dated on the 2nd of May, stamped into Parliament on the 1st of May to effectuate on the 3rd of May. Madam Chair, that letter, those letters are quite questionable and to me, and based on feedback that I will be receiving, is semi-borderline fraudulent. And I would like to get some clarity on that point based on the fact that those resignation letters were booked in on one day, dated in the future to effectuate the next day. Um, that is quite concerning because it gives me an impression in the direction that this coalition is going. And for me, Madam Chair, that is quite worrisome. And I believe that today it's clear to see that the support for the government is not there. It wasn't there last week and it's not there today. Um, Madam Chair, the last thing I want to do after working a, a, a full term is set St. Martin back 20 years. And I will do everything in my power, the constitutional power that I have here as a member of parliament to represent the people, to make this right. I heard my colleague mention about no time to play politics. My dear colleague of the USM faction, the ones that are playing politics are your colleagues that signed the coalition agreement with you. And I gave the following explanation. MP Doran, your proposal is? You have a proposal of order, yes. MP Duran, and yes. what is that? Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a proposal of order. I would like to adjust the agenda points and include two agenda points. The first one being the dissolvement of the presidium and the second agenda point to appoint a new presidium. MP Duran, this proposal, this proposal of order I cannot adjourn or I will not change the sequence of the agenda points for this meeting. So we will go over to the appointment of the credentials firstly. MP Doran, you want to respond? Yes, Madam Chair, I would like for you to allow the members of parliament to vote on this proposal, if that can be possible. Based no, MP Duran, I can't in this particular case, given the constitutional requirement of the appointment of members by examining the credentials. So, who requested a point? I heard Madam Chair, from whom did that come? Roll call. You would like a roll call at this time. Yes, 
Secretary General. Roll call, please. No, not at this stage, MP Utley. MP Akeem Arundel. MP Egbert Duran. MP Melissa Gums. Here. MP Artwell Erian. MP Silvera Jacobs. MP Francisco La Cruz. MP Kevin Mingret. MP Cloyd Marlin, MP Omar Otley, MP Shamira Roseberg, Chair Lady Sarah Westcott Williams. Present. At this point in time, it has been determined by roll call that there are only four members present in the Parliament Hall. And that would mean that we cannot continue this public meeting of Parliament, and the meeting is therefore hereby adjourned. SV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SV is cardless. Request your My SV account today and enter the virtual office of SV. Go to SV.SX and sign up now. SV, yeah. your social health insurance. of and as a result of the unwritten rules and constitutional norms that our country has been consistently applying and carrying out since October 10th, 2010, and that we have been adhering to even before that in the days of the Netherlands Antilles. Those unwritten rules, constitutional norms, are the norms that dictate that a majority in Parliament is responsible for nominating the ministers for appointment. Similarly, we have consistently been applying and carrying out another set of unwritten rules, constitutional norms, since October 10, 2010. And we have been adhering to those unwritten rules, constitutional norms, since even before that in the days of the Netherlands Antilles as well. Those unwritten rules, constitutional norms, are the norms that dictate that candidate ministers ought to be screened 
in order to ascertain if the conduct of a candidate minister is impeccable. And to be clear, as governor, I sign the laws, but I am not a lawmaker. It is not my task, nor within my authority, to change these norms. That is the role of the legislator. I simply apply them and adhere to them. St. Martin's governing system is that of a parliamentary democratic rule of law. Democratic because we, the people, elect our representatives. Parliamentary because those representatives are elected to serve in parliament. And the rule of law because a majority in parliament, in turn, selects a group of candidate ministers that have the trust of that majority to serve in the executive branch, government. A government that is tasked with carrying out the duties of the country in accordance with the law. The government is bound by the law, just like everyone else. No one, not even government, is above the law. This is the rule of law, the aim of which is to protect the people of St. Martin from abuse of power by dividing the powers in the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and the executive branch, the branch that has just taken the oath before you here today. An oath to upholding that rule of law, and in doing so, no matter how difficult, consistently and resolutely putting the country's interest above personal and individual interest. This is not always as easy as it seems. That is why we screen candidates for these positions. In order to protect the St. Martin people from those that would be acting in self, personal, or individual interest, and therefore being unfair to others and not putting the country's interest first. Every one of these individuals here today, the Prime Minister, Ministers, Minister and Deputy Minister Plenipotentiary, who have freely given up their direct democratically obtained seat in Parliament, as well as those not elected to Parliament, in order to be indirectly democratically appointed to these positions in government, are screened to protect us, the people of St. Martin. Likewise is the case for other indirectly democratically obtained positions in government, such as members of the High Council of State, Council of Advice, General Audit Chamber, Ombudsman, as well as Governor. Candidates for these positions are also screened and are also indirectly democratically appointed. The latter, as is the case for these appointed today, does not in any way diminish their legitimacy. The fact that all these positions are indirectly democratically appointed does give reason for a screening to take place. It is necessary for the public to have confidence and trust in those persons taking up those functions. As a result, and in line with practices of good governance, those candidates are screened to ensure that they are capable of carrying out the functions they are about to be entrusted with and that they are competent and integer individuals. SV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SV is cardless. Request your My SV account today and enter the virtual office of SV. Go to SV.SX and sign up now. SV, yeah. your social health insurance.
life's twists, turns, and defining moments. RBC is a man for all of you. deeply honored and privileged to have been entrusted with the responsibility of leading this nation as your next prime minister. I want to extend my sincerest thank you to you, the people of St. Martin, for your confidence in our coalition government and for placing your trust in me as your new Prime Minister of St. Martin. It is, as I said, a profound privilege to serve you, to work for you, and to strive for betterment for our St. Martin. Together, we form a collective force for positive change. And I'm committed to working collaboratively with every one of you to address the challenges that we face and to seize those opportunities that lie ahead of us in the best interest of our people. As we embark on this journey, let me assure you that this government will represent all citizens of St. Martin regardless of race, gender, religion, ethnicity, or sexual orientation. We have to understand that the diversity, it's the diversity that lies in our strength. And it's by embracing our differences and uniting as one people, we will achieve greatness on this small island. I do believe that cohesion, inclusiveness, and unification are concepts for us to promote and guardian. My fellow St. Martiners, I understand the hope and aspirations that rest upon our shoulders. I recognize the challenges that lie before of us. It's not easy, believe me. But I also see the immense potentials and opportunities that resides within our nation. Together, we have the power to shape our destiny, to build a future that is prosperous, just, and inclusive for all. Let's get more practical. I do believe that this government should focus on the following. First of all, we will have to work on the development of a financial sustainable system to cover the cost of our health care of our country. At this particular moment, we are overusing between the 30 to 35 million Antillian guilders to cover costs in the health care of St. Martin. I spoke with the SFV and they informed me that if we continue overspending over our yearly budget, the amounts between 30 to 35 million, we will have in six to seven years from now, a implosion, a collapse of our social insurance bank. 
So we will have to get serious with shaping off a sustainable financial system for our country. We will have also to enhance the regional cooperation in the area of economic development, education, healthcare, and climate change, as even the governor, governor stated in his speech this morning. I am deeply honored and humbled to sit before you today as the Minister of Justice for our beloved nation. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for granting me the incredible opportunity to serve our people. As the first St. Martin Bond law enforcement officer to hold this esteemed position, I understand the weight and the responsibility placed upon my shoulders. It is a privilege to lead our justice system and work tirelessly to ensure the safety and security for every citizen. My journey to this position has been filled with challenges, but it has also been guided by faith, determination, and deep love for our country. I believe that God has been preparing me for this role, equipping me with the skills, wisdom, and resilience needed to bring about positive change. As candidate number 10 on the now political platform, and now the 10th Minister of Justice, only speaks about completion. I see this not only as a personal achievement, but as a testament to the strength and resilience of our people. Together we have overcome obstacles and faced adversity with courage and determination. I said before you today, with a firm commitment to serve the people of St. Martin with integrity, transparency, accountability. My vision for our country is one of unity, progress, and prosperity for all. I believe that by working together, we can overcome any challenges that lie ahead and build a brighter future for generations to come. With the support of my esteemed colleagues in government, the dedicated members of our law enforcement agencies, and the unwavering spirit of the, our people, I am confident that we can achieve great things. Together we will strengthen our justice system, uphold the rule of law, and ensure that justice is served for all. I am deeply grateful for the trust and confidence placed in me, and I am committed to fulfilling my duties with honor, dignity, and dedication. Let us move forward for courage, with courage and determination, knowing that together we can make a difference and build a better St. Martin. First, allow me to express my deepest gratitude to our Heavenly Father for his unwavering guidance and blessings. Without his grace, having me stand here before you today as the newly appointed Minister of Finance for the people of St. Martin would not be possible. I humbly accept this opportunity to serve my country, being acutely aware of the gravity of this function. I have fully prepared myself to take on the challenges, responsibility, and accountability inherent to the finance portfolio. I am incredibly grateful to the membership and leader of the Democratic Party, the Honorable Mrs. Sarah Westcott Williams, for placing trust and confidence in me. Your nomination is not just a recognition of my abilities, but also a reflection of our shared commitment to serving our nation with integrity and dedication. I owe a debt of gratitude to the remarkable women who have paved the way for individuals like me. Their strength, resilience, and determination have allowed for this momentous time in our history as I proudly stand before you as the first female Minister of Finance of St. Martin. With this historic milestone comes great responsibility. I am committed to leading by example and to serving as a role model for future generation of women leaders. To those extraordinary women 
whose shoulders I stand on, I offer my sincerest appreciation. The Ministry of Finance is the engine for not only the existence, but at this juncture, the very survival of the economy of St. Martin, a portfolio on which each and every ministry is dependent, and one which will be constantly subject to heavy scrutiny, not only by the local public, but also by other member countries within the kingdom. I am cognizant of the fact that to be successful in my new role, my ministry needs to enjoy the trust, the buy-in, and cooperation of other colleagues in government, community leaders, and most importantly, each individual citizen of the island. I realize that trust and confidence in me as your Minister of Finance can only be earned through the systematic and relentless tackling of the significant financial challenges facing our people today, such as the rising cost of living, economic inequality, the need for sustainable growth, the preservation and protection of our environment, our history, culture, and everything that makes us unique and stand out as a people, as a country. I assure you that with the assistance of the persons in my ministry and my colleague ministers in government, I will approach these challenges with diligence, transparency, and integrity, with an emphasis on transparency. I am committed to policies that promote fairness and opportunity for all. It is essential that our citizens are well informed and empowered to participate in the decision-making process. To this end, my ministry will work closely with ministers across government, our partners in the private sector, and most importantly, you, the citizens who are the heart of this nation. However, I would be only fooling myself if I believe that I will be able to execute my role alone. The success of our beautiful St. Martin and its people is dependent on the involvement of our hardworking civil servants across all ministries, as well as the involvement, input, feedback, and watchful eye of you, the people of St. Martin. I need your assistance to keep my finger on the pulse of the economy and the lives of our people. Together, let us join efforts to bring about the changes that will create a more equitable and prosperous existence for each and every citizen of our beautiful, beloved island.